it is hard to save money these days. And I'm not just talking about the new phones and earbuds that come out this time of year and tempt you to spend. Interest rates are really low, which is great if you're borrowing to buy a house or a car, but not so awesome if you want to save. The interest rate for the typical U.S. savings account is nine hundredths of a percent. But all is not lost. For a long time, there have been higher rates for savers, even from mainstream banks, if you can find them. Now a young and scrappy group of tech startups are pushing the boundaries further with interest rates at about 2%. That's 20 times higher than is typical. It's the difference between earning 16 bucks a month on $10,000 in savings or earning just 75 cents. And that's just the beginning. There are cheaper ways to trade stocks also. There are ways to make money off of your credit card. And today, we're going to help you put a plan together. Welcome to Fort Knox, Rich Ideas and Powerful People. I am John Fort from CNBC here at the NASDAQ market site overlooking Times Square. With me this week, CNBC's personal finance expert, Sharon Epperson, and joining us in just a couple of minutes from San Francisco, Ken Lin, CEO of Credit Karma, which has just announced it's uh, launching one of these high yield savings accounts. Uh, Sharon, great to have you back. Good to be here. Okay, so. Um, Let's set this up. The U.S. Uh, personal savings rate in August was 8.1 percent. That's what was left after people bought stuff and paid taxes. But an online survey of 5,000 U.S. adults last year from Go Banking Rates found about half of us have less than a thousand dollars, less than a thousand dollars in a savings account. About half of those have nothing in a savings account. Does that, that sound plausible to you? It sounds plausible. It may seem surprising, but it's unfortunate a lot of people don't realize how important it is to have something tucked away because you never know what may happen. Even the Federal Reserve said the average American cannot pay for a $400 unexpected expense. Why? They have no savings. They don't have enough savings to cover it. And so this is creating a big problem because when you have a robust economy and people are still paying off credit card debt, not able to pay their balance in full every month. That also lets you know that they're probably not saving enough. That's why they're not able to do that. And when things turn, whether it's markets, the economy, you lose your job, right. you're in trouble. All right. So, so these high yield savings accounts, or at least, you know, relatively high yield, right, as high as you can get right, these days, right. they, they should be a good thing. Wealthfront announced one at the beginning of this year that they say a bunch of people have piled money into. Credit Karma announced one last week. Robin Hood announced sort of one this week. All are FDIC insured. What should people watch out for with these things? Well, one of the main things to watch out for is to make sure that you understand what it means that they're FDIC insured. These are. That's what you want when you go with an online bank or financial institution. You want to make sure that the money that you've deposited is covered up to $250,000 per account per depositor. That's what the FDIC insurance means. Mm. You also want to make sure that you're at a place that is going to be able to keep your money. You have it in savings, but if you need access to it, what are any of the fees that might be incurred? So you have to always read the fine print on that. And then also realize that 2% is much better that you're, than you're going to get in a traditional brick and mortars bank, but it's still not really keeping up with inflation. So how much money do you want to have in that savings account versus how much may you want to have invested in something else that may be more conservative than a stock, a mutual fund stock ETF or the stock market, but still give you a little bit more peace of mind? All right. And to talk some more about savings, Let's bring in Credit Karma's CEO, Ken Lin, joining us from San Francisco. Ken, great to see you again. Good afternoon. So um, you, you've got about 100 million people in Credit Karma, right? 12 That's years right. old. Uh, and, and free credit scores, if I recall, was your initial hook. And the way you guys make money is, you know, once people are on your, your platform, you refer them to credit cards or mortgages or... Um, insurance, uh, other services that people want to offer them. Is that fair? That's correct. Yeah. So, you know, for 12 years, we've been really helping consumers understand their credit. Uh, we've helped over 90 million consumers access their credit. And, uh, you know, we think there's an opportunity for a second, uh, second chapter to the story. Why savings? Why not stocks? Why not? Uh, why'd you pick savings? Well, I mean, I think everything you just alluded to, right? You know, America really is in a little bit of a savings crisis. You know, roughly 28% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck to your note. You know, about half of Americans don't have $500 in a savings account. If you really think about that, that is one car accident. That is one trip to the emergency room. Or if you don't that, uh, if you don't have those dollars, you end up in a downward spiral. And when we think about our opportunity to make a difference in people's lives, we really felt like helping you know, the 99% of Americans who don't have access to the very best rates, who don't have access 
uh, to these typically, you know, more uh, high-end uh, savings products, we felt like that was a great opportunity for us to build something that was meaningful. Do you think, Ken, with people being able to have access to a savings account on a site that also tells them what the best credit card is for them based on their rates, that they're going to be spending more time actually trying to pay down that debt? Do, is there any way that these are, products are going to be linked for people on your site? Well, you know, I think long term, that's certainly the view, right? So, you know, what, what we see in this space is that finances are hard. They're complicated. There's a lot of nuance to it. And our hope and our vision here is that by leveraging the cloud, leveraging technology, we can really simplify a lot of the payments. We can simplify a lot of the areas where people get in trouble. So, for example, think about just auto pay, right? Very simple idea, but so many people miss payments out of sheer habit. And if you can automate that payment, that makes a difference in people's lives, and that you know, helps them maintain their credit, which lowers their cost of borrowing, which we all know makes a big difference. So simple ideas like that go a long way. And what we are very focused on is changing habits. So when going back to this notion of savings, it's a little bit like brushing your teeth. If you can start at an early age and you can save $10 a month, that habit will make a difference by the time you're 30 or 40 years old, and that's really what we're focused on at Credit Karma. The one thing I like, Ken, is that it is a savings product, and there is no checking account associated with it, correct? Yeah, that's right. So the, the product that we launched last week is a high-yield savings account. You can open an account in as little four clicks. Uh, we partnered with uh, a network of over 800 banks. We look at the interest rate in that network each and every month, and we try to adjust and sort of provide the best product out there in that space. I think to your note uh, around FDIC, we're actually FDIC up to $5 million. Uh, there's no fees for the product. Uh, there's no hidden fees. There's no minimums. Uh, and it's five million so we really, because, really felt because you spread the money out among those 800 banks. Is that right? That's exactly right. And, you know, like we're, we're not sure if we're going to get $5 million deposits, but we wanted to give a sense of how big that network is. And we really wanted to differentiate our product from everyone else in the space. Yeah. One of the, the reason why I asked about the checking and, and the savings is yeah. that one thing, I, one strategy I think that helps build that discipline is not being able to get access quickly to the money. So if you're in a traditional brick and mortars bank where you have a savings account and a checking account, being able to transfer funds, dip into the money, it's a lot easier and it's just you see it all there right there on your sheet that you have money in these different accounts. Having it somewhere separate whether it is Credit Karma or another online bank that's not the same bank that you're doing your checking with is a way that I think many people are able to build savings and not tap into something that's supposed to be something that they've tucked away. Now it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that, Sharon, because I think Robinhood, with what they're coming out with, they have this debit card mm -hmm. that's tied to the account. And I and they, think that's dangerous. They, they tried to launch something like this back in December, but they didn't exactly have their ducks in a row when mm -hmm. it comes to regulation either. So you, you think that people should pay attention not just to the interest rate here, but the terms and think about what's going to help them reach their goals. Exactly. Just because it's a high interest rate doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best product for you. What are some of the other things that are offered along with this product? Are there educational tools on there that are going to help you figure out how to budget, figure out how to make sure that you're paying these bills on time? Is the automation what you need? All of those things are things to consider because just because it's a great interest rate doesn't mean it's necessarily the right product for you. All right, Ken, let, let me get cynical with you for, for a minute. You guys already have sure. a good amount of data on me. I've been using Credit Karma for years. I like to check my credit scar scores like, like everybody else should, I guess. <laughs> um, but then if you also know how much money I'm saving, what data are you going to have in addition to what you already have on people? And what are you going to do with it? Yeah, I think it's a really important question. And, you know, we've made no qualms about what we do for what data. We, we are very explicit. Now, specific to the savings product, we are not doing anything with that data. Our point of view on this particular product is we fundamentally believe that, you know, consumers, and I would say, again, the 99% of consumers who don't have access to these types of products, they deserve something better. When you look at just the sheer amount of innovation that has happened in financial services, very little of it is around savings, and we felt like this was an opportunity for us to do that. So I appreciate the cynicism, and, I, and everyone should. They should question what the business model is. For us, we've gotten to enough scale where we can offer this product, and we feel like it fundamentally is right for a vast majority of Americans so, by, by just building a product that drives engagement. So not even asset verification for signing up for stuff? Or 
or even offering people to do that in advance. Yeah, we can tell you that this person has $5,000 in a savings account. We can, we can vouch for that because we can look into their savings account. You're not even doing that? We're not doing any of that today. And, and I say today because we really have focused the last year and a half of our product development cycle on getting this product out to everyone. Uh, we focused on the low cost, or actually the zero cost. We focused on the ease of use. So that is where all of our product efforts are. We have not thought about the monetization. We have not invested in any of those product developments other than getting a great product out to the vast majority of Americans. Are there any safeguards in there or, or I guess, caveats that people should know about once you put your money in there? If you do need to get it out for an emergency, or you, do you have to have it Save, have it saved and established for a certain period of time? Is there a charge? What are the fees involved with this type of account? Yeah, so, so really great question. So no fees, right? No overdraft fees, no hidden fees, no minimums. But you do bring up a very important point, which is because it is actually socked away in a different account, uh, we are limited by ACA transfer times. So for example, what the current system of uh, transference, that, so it, there might be a one to three day delay in accessing those dollars. Um, so I think it's a little bit of a dual edged sword. I think, you know, readily accessible dollars means it's readily accessible and you might be tempted to spend it. Um, I, I think that's the negative. Um, the positive of that means is you can actually silo it and you can actually compartmentalize it. And I think that's what a lot of Americans do in general. But I think fundamentally from my psychology perspective, savings is very much about that end goal. And we built this product so that you can think about that end goal of saving for something meaningful and building that habit of not spending every dollar that you have. Ken, a lot of these accounts like Credit Karma, and I don't know about Credit Karma, so I'm going to ask you, they don't allow you to do automatic uh, deposit from your paycheck into these accounts because they're not set up like an individual bank. Is yours the same in that, yeah, you can do a, a recurring uh, deposit from another bank account into this, but I can't say, uh, go to my employer and say, hey, here's a routing number, an account number for Credit Karma, send this money to them every paycheck. Yeah, that's actually recurring deposits is actually a feature that we built into launch. So you can actually set it to take $20 every month and put that away into that high yield savings account. And again, this goes back to habit formation and something that we think is fundamentally important to the psyche and also the financial hygiene of Americans. So, you know, if you just simply did that, you know, you can beat that stat. In two years' time, you could have more than half of Americans in a savings account by simply putting $20 away. And that's, you know, four cups of coffee a month, right? Four lattes mm -hmm. a month. And to clarify again, that's, uh, so we that's think a deposit from another bank account not taking directly out of somebody's check. They, they can't set that up to go right into this account. That's correct. That's today. But in future product implementations, we certainly expect consumers to be able to do that. Uh, you know, this is our first foray. We wanted to get the simple, simplicity of registration, the no fee structure in place. But long term, we're going to add a lot of bells and whistles to make saving easier and, and you know, really help consumers understand what are good financial habits. Ken, what is the research, though, and the likelihood that people will do that? The reason why I think it is important to be able to do direct deposit from the paycheck is because then they don't see it. But if you put that in a checking account, how often do people actually take that money then out of the checking account after it's, their paycheck has been deposited there and move it to a savings account at an institution that's different than where they do their normal checking or where their paycheck is usually deposited? Well, you know, I think there hasn't been that much research done. I mean, I think if you take a look at what traditionally existed, it's happened in more of the traditional banks and mortars, uh, brick and mortars, and they don't think about it in the same way that we do. So I think we are still trying to understand and appreciate uh, those nuances of, yeah, does putting money away in a separate account really help you? I think the note, though, is, you know, some of the things that we really focus on is education, right? The beginning steps are what really matter. So do you even think about a savings account? Do you even have a savings account? I think that's the first step. I mean, most of us have transactional checking accounts, but do you even think about it from a savings perspective? Uh, another product that we really put out there is what we call our, our savings simulator. So with that, you can actually just see what the power of compound interest is. And what happens if you put $20 a month away, what happens when the rate is 2%, when it's 3%, when it's 5%, or when it's 0%? And I think part of this is the habits, but part of it is just education. I think we don't learn about um, simple finance in high school anymore, and we certainly don't learn about it in college. And we think those tools and that education is really powerful.
Yeah, and that's what CNBC is for. And Sharon, you that's know exactly me. Right. I've, I've told you before, <laughs> I, I'm a nut when it comes to this stuff. I got about yeah. nine savings and checking accounts yeah. to move money around for specific reasons. So I'm all about it. All right. It's time to get some digits. Uh, it's a time when we like to talk about a couple numbers that have caught my eye this week. Siri, what's up first? Four trillion dollars. Four trillion dollars. The total amount of outstanding consumer debt which hit record highs this year. Sharon, uh, we've got a number of different things going on adding to this, it seems. I remember when the longest rate offer on a car loan was like five years. I hear now they're offering seven and eight year car loans. Yes. What's going to be the impact of all this debt that people are feeling more and more comfortable taking out because interest rates are so low? The impact is as soon as the tide turns, whether it's in the economy or with their own personal financial situation, losing a job, having a medical emergency, they're not going to be prepared for it. And the level of credit card debt, auto loan debt, student loan debt, um, as that continues to increase so high, people are really going to be caught out there. And that's why having the savings program, knowing wherever you can to be able to put away money you're doing so, is so important particularly when times are actually pretty good. Mm. Ken, are you seeing it? Uh, you got insight into 100 million, probably plus, uh, accounts at this point and people. In, in terms of the credit scores or the amount of debt that people are taking on, what are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, I think that $4 trillion is actually excluding mortgages. So if you add mortgages, it's actually closer to $14 trillion. So we've definitely seen that trend increase. Um, I think the key here, is, as Sharon mentioned, is you have to have a tool set of financial products available to you. So you have to have a good credit score, right, for when that time hits. You have to have some dollars in savings. So I think these certainly are trends that um, we need to educate consumers against. And, you know, it is one recession. It is one unforeseen thing that gets a vast majority of Americans in trouble. When we look at credit, it is oftentimes that lost job or that medical expense that creates the downward spiral. Certainly there are a percentage of people who don't want to pay their bills, but when you look at the people who go from good credit to poor credit, it's that unexpected life consequence that makes the biggest difference, and our note is prepare for that. All right. Yeah, Siri, give us the next digit. 60 million. 60 million is the number of Americans having a hard time qualifying for credit cards and other loans. Ken, uh, it seems like when it comes to credit cards, the people who need help the most are not the ones who get the credit cards that help you the most. Uh, you know, it's, it's people with great credit scores and who can afford to pay big upfront fees who get these cards with amazing deals on points and cards that, that pay you back. How much might that be exacerbating inequality? Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes to credit, like responsibility is the biggest note. Um, you know, what I oftentimes will say is that don't focus on, uh, you know, credit cards being the, the, the savior here. What you need to do with credit cards is you need to use them as a tool they are, which is let them be the backbone of building your credit. So don't overextend. Pay off in full every month, right? Don't carry a balance. Never pay interest. If you can do that, you can really start establishing your credit, and I think that's the best utility of credit. And I think people forget that. I think oftentimes people think about it as a tool to finance debt, and it works okay for that, but I think that's where most people get into trouble. And I think particularly people who are in this category of already having a hard time of, of yeah. getting credit, don't fall into that same trap. And if you're paying 17% interest and you have good credit, because that's probably the average if you have good credit, that is so much interest that you're paying. So even though you think that rates are low or it's not as bad, for credit cards, it keeps going up. If you have a retail credit card and you're paying over 20, 25% interest, it's really not a, a bargain for you to be buying that on credit, even if the sales seem so great. So I think people need to realize, I don't know how many people really pay attention to what those rates are. They see that they can pay with plastic. They see a bill that comes to them every month, but they don't pay attention to how much interest they're paying on that, even when it's written in the fine print for them. Sharon, are you one of these points warriors out there where you have a credit card 
or two for specific things and you, you rack know up I points. Do. And, you okay. know I do. I love getting things on point. <laughs> I love it. And I see it as like, you know, this was a free trip, this was a free hotel, but it wasn't really. What did I spend my money on? I do pay my balance in full every, every time, so I am not carrying interest. But I do have to sometimes also wonder, some of these cards do have an annual fee. So did I take a big enough trip or do enough things that it really pays for itself? Sometimes it does, and sometimes I have, I have one card in particular. I'm just a loyal card holder, so I just keep it. And Ken, same question to you. Uh, I mean, you're clearly a data guy. You're out there uh, in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley. Um, are, you, are you a credit card hacker? I am. I mean, if you think about it, there are some amazing protections that credit cards give you, right? So purchase protection is one of those, mm. right? Um, cash back or the points that you described are one of those, right? Um, when you buy things on the Internet, if they're not as expected, the ability to charge back is a big component of it. So building your credit is another great component. So credit cards are amazing if you use them the right way. And I think there's just a percentage of people who don't understand that or who, who can't. And I think that's okay. But in that situation, you need to know yourself. And knowing yourself means if I can't manage credit, it means that I should probably move to a debit card and something that I can manage better because I think it is an easy trap to fall into. And we see it all the time. And our note is, like, know yourself and avoid those traps whenever you can. And know the situation around you, Ken, too. I think we've talked about this. When, it, when your job seems shaky, you're not exactly sure what's going to happen or you think there may be something coming along that you're going to have to spend a lot of money on, you know, that's the time to put the credit card away and pull out the debit card or use cash. I know no one wants to use cash anymore, but, but there's, a, there's a time for it. And, and it's kind of reading the tea leaves, particularly when your biggest asset, your job, may be in jeopardy. That's when you really want to put those credit cards away before you, something actually happens. And when you want to have money in a savings account. Exactly. That you can rely on. That's true. Bringing it all full, all circle, full circle. From perhaps Credit Karma <laughs> or Wealthfront <laughs> or, or, or the many names that we've exactly. mentioned. Exactly. Ken, thanks so much for being with us this week. Uh, Sharon Epperson. My pleasure. Always great to have Great you. to be here. Great to talk uh, to you. We've got the CEO of Snowflake. That is a hot startup. It's going to be on the podcast this week. If you're listening right now, here it is. For everyone else, that'll do it for Fort Knox. We'll see you next week.